Baseball is a ball and bat game played between two teams consisting of nine players each. Both the teams take turns to field and bat. The person who bats needs to hit the ball thrown by the pitcher and run counterclockwise around the pitch to cross the four bases and reach home plate scoring a run for the team. Likewise, the batting team takes turn to hit the ball and take runs for their team while the fielding team prevents the hitting team to get runs by getting them out. Any of the player on the batting team who has reached the base safely is allowed to progress to the subsequent bases while their team members bat and have hit the ball. If the fielding team manages to get three outs, they switch to batting. Each team gets turns to bat and to field. The visiting team gets to bat first and that is what makes an inning. There are nine such innings in a game. The scores of the teams are maintained and by the end of the ninth inning, the team who has more runs wins the game. Baseball is a majorly important game in America and it is the only game which has no game clock. Which means the game is not time bound and it can take how much ever time to finish. Baseball can be played by people of average height and weight. You do not have to be heightened or weightened to play the game like in basketball and football. Like the Americans usually say, anything for the love of the game. They really do mean it. There are numerous controversies regarding the origin of the game. Cricket rounders and softball are all believed to have taken shape from primeval public games. All these games were somewhat played in the same manner as the modern day baseball, even though there are no similarities in the name of the games. There were many other ball games, which had comical names such as poison ball, goal ball and stool ball. Some historical sources have the mention of Thomas Wilson, a conventional leader in England, who in the year of 1700 had condemned the game baseball and few other sports to be played on Sundays for the fact that lesser people visited the church. There are many such interesting evidences connected to baseball. One such claim seems to have come from a person named David Block. He claimed that stool ball was the original version of baseball. Stoolball can be traced back to an even earlier date than baseball, which would be in the year 1672. This claim only grows our curiosity in the game of stoolball and how was it played. It is known that a player who would bat stood in front of the stool and the pitcher from the other team would pitch the ball. If the player who is batting hits the ball and the other team who is fielding catches the ball, the batting player would be considered out. Just like in cricket, if the ball happens to hit the stool where the player who is batting stood, it is again considered to be an out for the batting team. The Origin of Baseball It is difficult to trace the precise evolution of baseball from the older games of bat and ball. An old French manuscript dating back to the year 1344 has a picture of clerics playing a game, conceivably La Soule, a French game with close resemblances to baseball. Many other old French games like the coup, la balle en prisonnier and la balle à bâton appear to be associated as well. Many had once agreed to it that the game baseball was a development made by the North Americans to the old game rounders, popularly played in Ireland and Great Britain. David Block, the writer of the book Baseball Before We Knew It, a search for the roots of the game, does not agree to it and argues that its origin comes from the English game stoolball. He even falsified the first print appearance of baseball, which was so long known to be in the year 1791, as an ordinance passed in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. He claimed with evidence baseball's first printed appearance in an English book, A Little Pretty Pocket Book, in the year 1744 by John Newbury. It comprehends the description of baseball through a woodcut which shows a field which has been set up in the similar manner as modern-day baseball. The small differences that were found was that the field was more triangular in shape rather than of diamond outline and it had posts instead of the ground-level bases that the modern game has. David Block also discovered the first ever noted game of Bass Ball, which had taken place in Surrey in the year 1749. The Prince of Wales played in it. A recording of baseball game on an Easter Monday of the year 1755 in Guildford, Surrey, by William Bray, an English lawyer, was also found. 
Such early form of the game seemingly came to Canada through the English immigrants. The game Rounders was brought to US by immigrants of Irish and British ancestry. The rules of the game were well established by the year 1796 to earn its mention in a book on popular pastimes by Johann Gusmuths, a German scholar. It described the English Passeport, which involved two teams who compete against each other. The batter was required to hit the ball in three attempts and run for home play to make a run. Bloch suggests in his book that baseball came to US along with the migrants in the colonial period. The Americans developed the game with some regional variations to give birth to modern baseball. Early in the year 1830, unorganized bat and ball games were reported of being played everywhere in North America. The games were given local names such as round ball, town ball and even baseball. A person who attended the baseball match in Beachville, Ontario in the year of 1838 gave a detailed description of the game to a sports magazine nearly 50 years later. Alexander Cartwright, a member of the Knickerbocker Club of the New York City, made the rules of the Knickerbocker Club in the year 1845, which many of the club rules made it look similar to the modern game. However, ball caught on first bounce was out and overhead pitching was not allowed at all. Some reports have the mention of the New York Knickerbocker having played in the year 1845. The first officially recorded baseball game in the US history is dated to 19th June 1846 in Hoboken, New Jersey. The game was played between New York Nine and Knickerbocker Club. The latter was defeated by 23-2-1, only in four innings. The Knickerbocker Club's rules continued for a long time for the game. In the next 50 years, the rules kept evolving to finally form the modern baseball rules. The game turns professional. By the mid of 19th century, a wave of baseball craze had hit the metropolitan area of New York. Baseball was being referred to as the national pastime of America or the national game of America by the journalists in the year 1856. In the year 1857, 16 baseball clubs from different areas formed the first governing body of the sport called the National Association of Baseball Players. In a year's time, the first baseball game that charged admission took place in Corona, Queens, New York at the Fashion Race Course. All stars of Brooklyn participated in the games, including players from Exacio of Brooklyn, all stars of New York, Manhattan, Brooklyn Atlantics, Putnam's and Eckford Brooklyn, Gotham's, players of New York Knickerbockers included Eagles and Empire. This was understood to be the first baseball games featuring all stars. In the year 1863, the rules were again altered and catching a ball on first bounce was no more considered to be out. The Cincinnati Red Stockings Baseball Club was formed in the year 1869 and set a record of being undefeated by the amateur teams. The National Association of Professional Baseball Players came to an end in the year of 1875, so it barely enjoyed four years as the first professional league. The last change in the rules of the game happened in the year 1901, when the counting foul ball as strikes was instituted. In the year 1876, a formal national league was originated which was more formal in nature and was referred to as the senior circuit as it was the older most surviving major leagues. By the early 1890, the African Americans were barred from participating in the professional leagues owned by the whites. This led to the formation of professional Negro Leagues. In the year 1884, overhand pitching was permitted. Equivalent to the National League's level, there rose a league from the minor Western Leagues and named itself the American League. Both the leagues had eight teams to themselves and were big-time rivals fighting for the best players. A pact was signed between the two leagues to make relations formal in the year 1903. Since then, the World Series was started in which the champions of both the leagues played against each other. This became an annual event. The Dead Ball Era During this period, the games were mostly low-scoring and the pitchers dominated. The famously known pitchers of that time were Cy Young, Walter Johnson, Grover Cleveland, Alexander 
and Christy Matherson. They were such good with the ball that the period during which they played from 1900 to 1919 was known to be the dead ball era. The term also precisely defined the state of baseball itself, as each ball cost $3, which was a pretty heavy amount at that time. The owners of the clubs were reluctant in buying new balls for the same reason. It was uncommon for a ball to have lasted through an entire game. The ball would be found to be covered in mud, tobacco juice and grass, misshapen by taking continuous hits from the bat. The only instance when the balls were replaced was when it was hit into the stands and got lost in the crowd. The clubs had gone to such extents as to hiring a security guard to retrieve the ball which got hit into the crowd. As a result, home runs were a rare occurrence. The Merkel Incident In the year 1908, on 23rd September, the games played between the American League and the National League took place in the Polo Grounds. The games concluded in an explicable turn of events and is referred to as the Merkel Boner. The game was between the New York Giants and Chicago Cubs. Fred Merkel was the first baseman, along with his teammate, Moose McCormick, who was on his third ball with two outs, and the game was tied between the two teams. Al Brightwell struck a single scoring, McCormick, and apparently winning the game. The spectators ran into the field assuming the game to be won by the Giants, which was an acceptable practice back then. Meanwhile, Merkel, who was supposed to make a run for the second base, instead ran to the clubhouse to evade the mob of spectators. Johnny Evers, the Cubs' second baseman, noticed Merkel and claimed to have retrieved the ball and touched the second base, making him out and invalidating the scored run. This was brought to the attention of the umpire Hank O'Day, who declared Merkel out. Notwithstanding the opinions of Giants, the league endorsed the umpire's decision and asked for the game to be replayed. The Cubs won and Merkel was condemned to unending criticism. As for this event, it went down in history as Merkel's boner. New Places to Play In the days when there was no television, if you wanted to watch a baseball game, you had to go to the stadiums where the games were held. In the beginning of the 20th century, there was an extraordinary rise in popularity of the game. The spectators increased and so did the need of bigger stadiums. Many new stadiums were built solely dedicated to the baseball games and many of the existing stadiums were enlarged for the same, including Sharp Park, Tiger Stadium in Detroit, Ebbets Field in Brooklyn, Fenway Park in Boston, Polo Grounds in Manhattan, Wrigley Field and Comsky Park in Chicago. The Black Sox Scandal The fixing of the baseball games by players and gamblers functioning together had been doubted from the year 1850. Players like Chris Speaker and Ty Cobb were accused to have supposedly fixed the outcomes of the games. The Major League Baseball's conceit was ultimately exposed after the 1919 World Series and it was famously known as the Black Sox Scandal. The Chicago White Sox had an excellent season of winnings and were suspected to win the World Series of 1919 by many. They were arguably the best baseball team with a good defense, deep lineup and strong pitching players. The game was up with the Cincinnati Reds of the National League, but nobody including the Gamblers had anticipated the Reds standing a chance to win the game. The Reds won the game 5-3 and left people in disbelief. Back at that time, the baseball players were not paid very well. They had to find themselves other jobs during the off-game seasons for survival. Some of the top city clubs made handsome salaries, but Chicago was not one of them. The White Sox was owned and run by Charles Komsky, who was known to pay the lowest player wages in the American League. All the players of the team had a strong hatred for Komsky. They were all bound to stay calm because of the baseball's reserve clause that did not allow the players to switch teams without the permission of the team owner. Komiski's harsh behaviour had created deep bitterness in the heart of the Sox players by the late 1919. Arnold Chick Gandel, the first baseman on the White Sox, made a decision to conspire to throw the World Series of 1919. 
he convinced Joseph Sport Sullivan, a gambler with whom he had former dealings, to fix the match for $100,000, which would be paid to the player who were involved in this. Arnold Rothstein, the New York gangster, supplied the amount through his substitute, Abe Attle, who was a featherweight boxing champion to Gantle. In the beginning of the 1920 baseball season, the rumors hit the air that the few players had conspired to lose the 1919 World Series purposely. So a grand jury was summoned to investigate the matter. Eight players, including Arnold Chick Gantle, were accused and tried for conspiring. The players were ultimately cleared of the accusations. Even so, the owners of the baseball teams could not bear the damage the scandal made on the sport, so they appointed for themselves a federal judge. Kinsaw Mountain Landis was the first commissioner of baseball. Black Sox was banned for life from the professional baseball games by him. Rise of Babe Ruth and End of Dead Ball Era it was not the Black Sox scandal, but a change in the baseball games and a player who were responsible for the end of the dead ball era. A strict rule prevailing to the size and shape of the ball was passed. Spitballs and other trick pitches were outlawed. The umpires were responsible to change the ball whenever one got discolored or scuffed. After the death of Ray Chapman, who was hit on the head in a game being played on 16th of August 1920 by a ball pitched from Carl Mays. The ball seemed to be discolored because of which Chapman did not see it coming. After his death, the rule which was enforced was followed even more strictly. Harry Frazee, who owned the Boston Red Sox, sold a group of his star players to the New York Yankees. George Herman Ruth, also known as Babe, was amongst them. His career reflects the shift of authority from pitching to hitting. When he had started his career in 1914, he was a pitcher. In two years' time, he was considered to be a strong left-handed pitcher in baseball. When he got a chance to bat, he proved his worth. In his last season played in Boston, Ruth hit 29 home runs. The power-hitting capability of Ruth revealed a new technique of playing the game, which was loved extensively by the crowds. Apart from Ruth, there were other players like Rogers Hornsby who were good hitters as well. The trend was set by Ruth, and by the end of 1930, all the good teams had their own home run hitters, commonly known as sluggers. The Baseball Hall of Fame was established in the year 1936. Five players, namely Walter Johnson, Ty Cobb, Christy Mathewson, Honor Swagner, and Babe Ruth were elected. The hall was finally inaugurated in the year 1939. The Racial Incorporation in Baseball when U.S. involved in the World War II, many players had to quit the games to join the armed force. However, the major leagues continued to play, and eventually, after the end of World War II, baseball came back to life. The years after the war, baseball perceived the racial incorporation of the sport. The African American were banned from playing on a white-owned baseball team since the year 1890. However, the American society approached for the integration after the war. This was partially possible as a result of the eminent military services provided by the African Americans in the war through units such as 366th Infantry Regiment, Tuskegee Airmen and others. The renowned actor and athlete Paul Robeson, who was an African American, campaigned the incorporation of the sport in the year 1943. Several baseball team owners considered recruiting team members from the Negro League post the war. Few of the baseball team owners were interested in the services of few good African-American players and wished to sign them up. Kinesaw Mountain Landis, the powerful baseball commissioner, was a steadfast segregationist and opposed any such efforts made by the team owners. After his death in the year 1944, a major obstacle for the African-American players from playing in the major leagues was removed. As the years passed, the African-American participation in the baseball games increased. Major Leagues Move West The baseball games have been in the West for as long as the American and National Leagues have. It made a league of its own, adding the Los Angeles Angels, Hollywood Stars, Portland Beavers, Oakland Oaks, San Francisco Seals, Sacramento Solons, Seattle Rainiers and San Diego Patras, together known as the Pacific Coast League. 
The PCL was a member of the National Association of Professional Baseball Leagues. It kept selling its best players for less than $8,000 a player to the National and American Leagues. PCL was more independent than many other minor leagues and protested against the Eastern Masters continuously. The president of the PCL demanded the baseball commissioners Happy Chandler and Kennesaw Mountain Landis an even-handedness in the major leagues and later to form a separate major league. Both the commissioners refused his requests. Chandler and other major league owners conspired to terminate the PCL. Baseball in the years 1953 to 1955 the baseball franchises of the major leagues were mostly confined to the northeastern parts of the United States until 1950s. This was mainly because the locations of the teams had remained unchanged from 1903 to 1952. Boston Braves were the first team in 50 years to have relocated to Milwaukee in the year 1953 and the club set their attendance records there ever since. The trend was then followed by other teams like the St. Louis Browns, who in the following year moved to Baltimore and renamed themselves the Baltimore Orioles. The Philadelphia Athletics, in the year 1955, moved to the Kansas City. National League Leaves New York New York market was torn apart in the year 1958. The New York Yankees of the American League were becoming a leading attraction. At that time, the West had numerous fans of all age groups and it seemed to be a comfortable market for the esteemed teams of the National League such as the New York Giants and Brooklyn Dodgers. The strategy was to place these two dynamic clubs in any two big cities of the West, destroying any ideas or endeavours by the PCL to form a third major league. In the eagerness to bring the famous teams to the West, the owner of the team, Dodgers, Walter O'Malley, was given a helicopter tour by Los Angeles for him to pick a spot. On the other hand, the team, Giants, were given to the PCL San Francisco Seals accommodations on lease and the Candlestick Park was constructed for them. This is how the National League left New York and moved West instead. California the New York Giants and the Brooklyn Giants were known to be rivals when they were in New York. It makes it logical that they chose their new cities to be Los Angeles, which is Southern California, by the Dodgers, and San Francisco, which is Northern California, by the Giants. Both the cities are known to already have a fierce rivalry, dating back to the founding of the states because of political, cultural, economic and geographical reasons. Later in the year 1961, the Los Angeles Angels brought the American League to the Southern California. It was known to be the first team in California to have expanded. 1961-1998 Other teams followed the path on Angels and expanded their teams. The Washington Senators joined the American League, who had moved to Minnesota to be called the Twins. The year 1961 was also a year well noted as the year in which Roger Maris hit 61 for the New York Yankees and broke the record of Babe Ruth's one-season home run record. The National League added teams in 1962 to keep in pace with the American League, who had expanded its league by adding teams. New York Mets and Houston Cold 45s were the latest additions of the National League. The year 1969 saw the American League expand again when the PCL teams, Kansas City Royals and Seattle Pilots were given entry in the league. The Pilots remained in the league for just one season, which was held in Seattle, then moved to Milwaukee, now famously known as the Milwaukee Brewers. The National League also added two teams in the same year, San Diego Padres and Montreal Expos. With this, the PCL best teams were all gone to either the National or the American League. However, the Coast League survived, it moved to other markets and endures to this day with a new name as Class AAA League. In the year 1977, the American League expanded to 14 teams. It took years for the National League to match up to that. Finally, in 1993, National League was able to expand to bring more teams under the league to make it 14. In the year 1998, both the leagues had 15 teams each. Milwaukee left the American League to become a member of the National League to make the number even between the two leagues. Pitching Dominance and Change of Rules 
the pitchers were being more favoured than the hitters in the year 1960s. In the year 1968, the player who won the American League batting title was Karl Jastrzemski, with the average of 301, so far the lowest in the history of baseball. Denny McLean of the Detroit Tigers won 31 games as a pitcher the same year. The major baseball leagues had to make some changes in the rules considering such events. In the year 1969, the strike zone was reduced and the pitcher's mound was lowered. Invalidating the Reserve Clause Since the foundation of the major leagues, the control of the game and the players were in the hands of the team owners. Despite a few players' organization that had transistory lives, the owners' absolute control over the game lasted for nearly 70 years. In the year 1966, the players sought the help of Marvin Miller, an activist in the labor union, to create the Major League Baseball Player Association MLBPA. Following this, Don Drysdale and Sandy Koufax, well-known players of the Los Angeles Dodgers, denied to renew their contracts. The end of reserve clause was near, which had held the players to play for one team. The MLBPA fought for the rights of the players in the court and lost. But the damage was made and even though the reserve clause survived, it had been irreversibly weakened. Finally, in the year 1975, Dave McNally and Andy Messersmith, players of the team Montreal Expos, played without signing contracts for a year and later declared themselves to be free agents as per the arbitrator's ruling. The owners had no other choice than to accept the terms of the MLBPA. With this, the reserve clause was successfully replaced by free agency and negotiation. The Marketing Era Many changes were seen in the 1980s. The major league games were affected drastically from the mixture of effects conveyed by television broadcasts of the games, free agencies, changes in the science of sports, advertisements and more. These, in turn, led to fan dissatisfaction, steep rise in prices, changing the game plan, use of steroids by players for better performance. Science of Sport In the period of 1980s, the need of workout and exercises increased. Body training equipment were improved in the weight rooms. Doctors and trainers introduced healthier schedules and diets to make the players healthier, stronger and bigger than ever. Another change in the game was the implementation of pitch count. In the history of baseball, it was a usual thing that one pitcher pitches through the entire game. Now, the coaches made sure that one pitcher does not pitch more than 125 balls for the safety of their arms. Therefore, more pitchers were trained, few hurlers with high-velocity pitching, middle relievers and closers. Television All the games had been watched live since the 20th century. After television sports was introduced in the 1950s, all the attention of the major leagues went on increasing their revenues. Initially, the broadcast was limited to the local area. It affected the independent and minor leagues badly. People choose to stay home and watch the renowned Maury Wills rather than visiting their local ballparks to watch unknowns game. The Major League Baseball controlled the rights and charged fees for all the games that were broadcasted on television as well as radio. It added to their revenue flow in addition to the attention of the people. When the television networks opened, the national channels the games were broadcasted on national television, the baseball games had a larger audience. Sponsorship and Endorsements Huge media coverage on newspaper, magazines and television to attract the attention of the new generation and increase their interest in reading also helped in attracting sponsors. The players were given financial opportunities to do advertisements, which would ultimately benefit the baseball games itself. Baseball souvenirs and memorabilia and autographs of the players were sold on the internet in the late 1990s for big prices. Big brands like Nike fought to get their logos on the sportswear of the players on the field. By the end of the 20th century, during a live game, the backstops of the fields were covered by the advertisements. The Player Influence the Baseball players who were once poorly paid were now living in an age where they were paid extremely well for their services. Side Deals 
The players were approached by big companies for baseball card sponsorship, commercial endorsements and athletic shoes deals. Sports agents There were sports agents who figured how more revenue can be generated by the players because of their popularity among the people. They figured which of the players are most popular among the general crowd and put them up with the television contracts to energize the shows and earn revenue in return. Business and strategy plans The high salaries of the players also became a reason for many change in the game strategies. Even if the players did not perform well, they were not sent down to the minors. Other players who could only rise by the means of good performance were trapped because of these overpaid stars. To make the media happy became the main aim as the major revenue flow came from there. Owners and players feud In the 1980s, contractual disputes between the players and the owners reached to a serious situation. There had been strikes by the baseball players earlier as well, which caused disturbance in the game seasons. So the owners locked the players out of the springtime training over a dispute of free agency. The owners wanted to tie the players to contracts which the players found unacceptable as they recently got their freedom for the bondage of reserve clause. They set on a strike which lasted for more than a month, ending up with the owners agreeing to the players' terms. Strike 2 this happened in the year 1994 when the owners wanted to renegotiate the free agency and salary terms. The players went on strike once again on 12th of August 1994. The Major League Baseball declared the World Series to be cancelled on September 1994. Home Run Mania The Americans were infuriated by the cancellation of the 1994 World Series. The fans had stated the strike to be war. There was outrage on part of the fans, however, the attendance numbers and broadcast rankings went down in the year 1995. The players played extremely well, breaking old records in the years from 1995 to 2001. In the year 1998, Mark McGuire, the first baseman of the team St. Louis Cardinals, and the outfielder of Chicago Cubs, Sammy Sosa, engaged in a home run race. McGuire set the mark on 70, which was later beat by Barry Bonds of San Francisco Giants. Bonds broke many records, but with his involvement in the BALCO drug scandal, it only makes sense. McGuire was admitted for heavy steroids intake after his retirement. The Age of Steroids Steroids impacted the game of baseball because of the immoral powerfulness that it allowed. It sways the health of the players and changes the appearance and atmosphere of the game. The drug gives a contemptible advantage to players, which breaks the social bond of having a fair game. It has many side effects to it, such as liver deformities and many other problems, but the tempting power and strength it gives is often more attractive to some consumers and therefore predominates the enticement too to take the drug. Moreover, steroids influence baseball's atmosphere as it affects the capability to equate players of different ages. With steroids, players are able to achieve many personal strength objectives, home runs come in abundance, superstars are made, but there are also long-term penalties that they would have to suffer. The players were tempted by the big money, which led them to perform to their full potential. The Baseball Drug Act was no secret. In 1960s, the tiring schedule of 162 games per season compelled the players to take amphetamines in the form of energy pills, also known as greenies. Almost two decades later, new performance augmenting drugs like ephedra and other steroids were introduced. The baseball commissioner, Faye Vincent, in the year 1991, has strictly prohibited the use or sale of any kind of illegal drug by the players. Anyone involved was subjected to permanent expulsion from the games. In the year 2003, Steve Patchler, an overweight pitcher, died while playing due to heavy intake of the ephedra. Many other players who were extraordinarily good were found to have been on steroids. Falco Scandal In the year 2002, a major scandal was uncovered where a company named Balco 
Bay Area Laboratory Cooperative was found to have been producing a steroid which could go undetected on the drug tests. The name of the steroid was Designer Steroid and were available in two forms, the clear and the cream. The company had its connections with the trainers of few players as well including trainers of Barry Bonds and Jason Gayambi. On detailed investigation on the company, many famous sportsmen were found to be involved. The Power Age With the use of the steroids, there were a lot of power games. However, there were many other factors that helped the players to hit so many home runs. The size of the ballparks was smaller than that in the past. The baseball balls were manufactured in a way that it was wound up in a tighter manner, which allowed the ball to travel even further. Watering the pitches also helped a lot. In the year 2005, in a baseball game, the players easily make 40 to 50 home runs in a season, which in the 1980s was a rare thing.